The internet age could easily be called the ethernet age. Modern society as we understand it does not exist without ethernet. This behind the scenes technology creates a common infrastructure that interconnects the world. Ethernet is used to do everything from banking, getting into college, powering the stock market, ultrasound machines and amusement park rides. From stadium scoreboards to communications on Mars, Ethernet is the unquestioned choice for moving data fast and far. Pulling back the curtain on this hidden technology is Intel principal engineer Douglas Boom. Douglas has garnered over 20 patents and is the winner of the prestigious Intel Achievement Award. During his 27-year career overseeing Ethernet's adoption into a wide variety of Intel products, Douglas has played an integral part in developing technologies that enabled Ethernet to achieve an astonishing 10,000x speed-up gain. His work has been used everywhere Intel Ethernet has gone. Ethernet is the data interconnect of the world. And it's not even close to done yet. This is Architecture All Access. I'm Douglas Boom, and this is Architecture All Access Ethernet. One computer alone is a very powerful thing, but more of them working together is exponentially powerful. Ethernet solves the problem of getting data to and from the CPU, so it has something to do. In the oldest days, you literally had to walk the data around from machine to machine, euphemistically called sneakernet. Feeding the computer things to do was the first real usage of PC communications in general. Serial buses, phone line style modems, all of these had uses in the early days, but had limitations and challenges that left the market open for new ideas. Ethernet promised interoperability over distances and a framework to grow to new speeds and features while still staying backwards compatible. Once there was a dependable way to share data, a PC wasn't something that just sat on your desk, it was a gateway to information from across the globe. Ethernet itself is really several technology subsystems working together to move the data. Starting from the host CPU, it goes over bus to the Ethernet Media Access Controller, or MAC. The original role of the MAC was to slice digital data into chunks so that the network could understand and deal with it. New functionality beyond slicing has been added over time, making it into what is called an Ethernet controller. Much like facial tissue is known commonly by a brand name, it's still commonly called a Mac. But controller is more accurate. For speed, I'll be using Mac, but then controller. From the Mac, it goes through the physical layer, or the Phi. The Phi is the hardworking part that takes the digital stream and makes it into a form that can move over the physical medium. Typically an analog piece, the Phi is the part you plug into. How do these Phi's know what speed to talk to each other? Something called auto negotiation, or AN. AN is a highest common denominator style exchange where each side says what they can do and separately arrive at the same answer. With AN, you can support multiple speeds like 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig, and on up. But without it, you can only use forced speeds, which is just one speed. Using the force is a long time ago for Ethernet too. The line signaling methods were once what defined Ethernet, but now Ethernet's more about the frame. The frame is what the Mac does to the data. Just like sending a letter via the post, there needs to be information on where the data is going, where it came from, how big it is, what the package contains. The Ethernet frame has the same thing. Destination address is where it's going to. The source address is where it's coming from, in case they want to reply. And the size type field describes the frame in terms of how much to expect. In a raw frame, the size is provided. When it's a type, it will tell the user of the packet how to deconstruct the rest of the packet. That rest of the packet is called the payload, and it's like an envelope inside of the envelope. For example, your average internet packet has its own type. By saying this in the type field, Information like the size is at a known location in the payload. Bringing up the rear of the Ethernet frame is the CRC field, a checksum to make sure the data is intact and wasn't damaged along the journey. The sum is a 32-bit field that uses complex math to make sure the integrity is good. Payloads can also have their own checksums, and sometimes those are done on the controller. The payloads are where the controller is getting smarter every generation of products. Originally, the payload was part of the frame, 
as per a vendor soup of interconnect protocols, SPX, IPX, NetBIOS, NetBuoy, and many more. Now it's just a few types, all based on TCP IP and UDP. I'll use one of my favorite hobbies, the online multiplayer game Rocket League, to explain the difference. TCP IP is for when it absolutely has to get there, like when you buy a choice new car body from the store. And UDP is for real-time stuff like gameplay, when you don't care about what happened in the past. But with UDP comes drops, with TCP comes latency spikes, and either way, it'll totally make you whiff when the ball suddenly jumps forward a car length as the next packet comes in. That's why you see so many whiffs labeled as lag. I whiff because I'm a 50-year-old gold one that just loves the game. Regardless of the payload type, its contents can be used to route the packet directly to the CPU core doing the work. This is where more advanced topics like RSS and VMDQ come into play and expand the feature set of the controller. Enough about the digital side, let's talk more about the way ethernet frames travel to the rest of the world. The physical layer is the highway the packets travel and the cables are the type of pavement used. They come in a growing variety of styles, each with their own methods and pros and cons. Thousand Base T is easily the most common wired ethernet standard being sold today. That one phrase contains a ton of info. First is the speed, in this case, one gigabit. The second term, base, tells us the type of physical encoding. The other options are broad and passband, but Ethernet is all about that base. Encoding is the language the data is expressed in. In this example, T is short for twisted copper wires. It is a cheap cost-effective way of reaching 100 meters. You can tell a base T implementation from the RJ45 connector. The other major connector, is the SFP SFP Plus. The Plus version goes faster. With this connector, you can use all sorts of media. Here is a DA cable, good for shorter distances like top of rack. Here is an SR module for inside of the building. And here is an LR module for inside of the campus. Thanks to the flexibility of the Mac, you can move one ethernet card called a NIC or network interface card from one roll, top of rack, to another role, like talking between buildings, just by changing the pluggable SFP Plus module. Few technologies can match this quick repurposing that is a hallmark and the power of Ethernet. Many forces keep pushing Ethernet to become more all the time. This has meant that Ethernet has been evolving ever since it got started. Customer usage models push for faster speeds, longer distances, and lower costs. There's little risk Ethernet will get stale. Ethernet once just seen as an office technology, connecting a handful of PCs, has flourished into that of a ubiquitous computer communication system. Today, you'll find Ethernet in medical equipment, stadiums, amusement park rides, ships, trains, planes, and automobiles, industrial machines, spacecraft, and even sort of vending machines. And as their partner CPUs get more capable, the need to feed them more and more data pushes the speed of the network to amazing throughput levels. 200 gig and 400 gig speeds require new ways for processing at both the Mac and the Phi levels. The Phi innovation also involves improving the cost of modules. Silicon Photonics allows for cost-effective optical modules at faster speeds. On the controller side, workload routing is getting into a whole new level with the Infrastructure Processing Unit, or IPU. You don't just move packets, you move application data at a level the application doesn't see. That's a whole topic in and of itself, but it shows the future continues to be bright for Ethernet. I can't believe how much Ethernet has changed in the many years I've been working on it, and that rate of change will only continue, if not accelerate. Thanks for joining me in this Architecture All Access episode about Ethernet.